So can you talk about Bretton Woods? Like, like what happened at Bretton Woods? What is Bretton Woods? That's, uh, that's an important one. Yeah, it's a good one. It's essentially, imagine the world destroyed. It's World War, end of World War II, everything is destroyed. But you have this one country that's quite powerful that didn't get destroyed, and that'd be the United States. And they come in and say, okay, the world reserve currency, there were six world reserve currencies prior to that, and it was the sterling pound in, in England. Well, they got destroyed. So the United States comes along and says, hey, we're going to make a bid for becoming the new world reserve currency. And they pulled it off via Bretton Woods. And they essentially said, okay, all your currencies are destroyed. All your economies are destroyed. We've got an idea. Send us all your gold. We'll put it in Fort Knox. We will create a currency that's backed by gold, this new world reserve currency. We promise you that we will send you physically the exact same gold bar that you stamp, that you send to us. If you request it back, we'll send you the exact same one. And all you have to do is peg your currencies to our currency and we'll solve the world's problems. And it was uh, on the surface, you know, the world's in turmoil. It seems like a very, you know, consistency thing. It's like, yeah, okay, maybe the world needs this, right? Turned into potentially one of the largest global heists of financial value the world has ever seen. When Germany and other countries were like, okay, we kind of like our gold back. It was like, oh, uh, give us a minute. And it would take like eight years. And then they get back bars that weren't even theirs. And then people are realizing, wait, is there any money in Fort Knox at all? <laughs> is this even backed by gold? And then it leads into another really significant moment, which is 1971, the Nixon shock, where Nixon basically said, yeah, the US dollar, this thing you all trusted in across the world, um, because Vietnam is really expensive and stuff. We're not going to peg it to the gold anymore. It's just now fiat. And that word fiat, if you haven't heard it before, it means money by government decree. There's nothing backing it. And there's been you know, hundreds of fiat currencies, many, many hundreds of fiat currencies. And the average lifespan, this is back when I did that presentation in 2013, is 26 years. So essentially, fiat currencies don't last very long. And as of 1971, the United States has been on a fiat currency. They broke away from the gold standard and they're basically just saying, hey, it's kind of whatever we want. And now you get modern monetary theory and all these other economic ideas that come into place. And people are like, can you really just like print money out of nothing? And it got me thinking about really the nature of financial value itself. And these are the type of questions that cryptocurrency got me really asking hard, like, what is money? And I started realizing it's essentially shared storytelling. It's a group of people. And this goes back to, you know, as I started studying the history of money, you know, tally sticks and shells and rocks with holes in them, you know, all these different mechanisms for money. And it's really just a group of people, communities saying, we actually believe this is valuable. And if you believe it's valuable too, we'll agree to trust each other. It's a ledger, essentially. We'll, we'll, we'll put entries in this ledger. You'll get a couple of tally sticks. I'll get a couple of shells. You'll get a couple of pieces of paper with dead white people on them, whatever it is, right? And, and you get this situation where you get a shared understanding of value that is really just a myth. It's really actually storytelling. But as long as everyone believes the story, it works. And it's the second the story breaks down that you start to see increasing in violence. You start to see all these things. I mean, we've seen in Venezuela, Argentina. And then when you dig a little deeper and you go, okay, who's funding all this war we see in the world? Then you start to look into like, you know, all wars are bankers wars. You might even get us some Smedley Butley and understand, you know, war is a racket. He is one of the most honored uh, military generals of all time. And reading his speech is really phenomenal. Uh, war is a racket by Smedley Butler. And you start to realize he's like, the only difference between me and Capone is that like Capone, you know, he owned Chicago, I own three continents. And this is this guy that's just open about his role as a military leader in the United States and what that meant from a global economic perspective and really just a bunch of thugs, essentially. You know, people that were using violence and the control of value itself to dominate reality. And so it's, that's where I got excited about if we can have a story of value, a ledger that is completely trusted in an untrust, like you don't have to trust the actors. It's basically physics and math. It's, it's technology that can't be destroyed or distorted. It's immutable. It has all these amazing properties to it. They got me thinking, oh my gosh, if this is possible, what else is possible?